what I thought would be good to show you as a sort of final um, point while we're on this topic, the, the way that you can kind of get ideas for outside of, of course, looking at the course content on the site um, is by listening to tracks that you like and checking out the metering that we've been looking at and seeing how they do it, you know, seeing what they've set to stereo, how much stereo they've applied to it, um, and then just, you know, taking some taking some tips from that. So I've got a track, which I'll just add it here. It's on the desktop somewhere. Tommy set. Um, <clears throat> and it is this plastic wax one. So I'll just drop it on here. Plastic wax. This is by uh, Crafty Cuts. Don't know if any of you know Crafty Cuts. Um, just turn off warp. So this is the track. It's um, it's a very well produced track, and I've actually just got a reference plugin which I'm very interested to check out. Don't know if any of you have this. It's a uh, reference two by Master in Mix or something. Mix in. What's it called? mastering the mix yeah they've got a load of quite cool looking mastering plugins so i was sort of quite interested to check them out see if any of you guys um would benefit from them i've been using the sample magic magic ab a little bit sometimes when i mix to to do the ab comparisons um but yeah in any case using a reference track is an essential thing when mixing to make sure you know your sound compares and just a being in general um also a being in your own track you know switching out sounds uh say you've got a lead sound and you think you're happy with it duplicate the track switch out the lead to a different sound see if it works better just any kind of as many comparisons as you can get when you're producing will help you get the best perspective that you can on your mix uh, because it's all too easy to hear a sound and think it's cool and then the main reason that you sort of stuck with it is because you didn't hear anything better <laughs> and there's, there's plenty of sounds out there <laughs> and um, that's what I mean by sound selection you know being a little bit more critical with the sounds that you're using and a being them is one way of doing that so here's our track here it's like I say it's a breaks track by Crafty Cuts solo it, Ooh, solo it. So yeah, um, kicks in around here, 32, I guess. There's a really big sounding mix, um, but as we'll actually see with the next question, because the next question flows on really well. By the way, if I didn't say yet, Simon Chadwick, um, excellent question, this last one, it really Thought it was a great topic for, for you guys to to have me cover. Uh, but yeah, when we go into the next one, um, it's which is also sort of talking about a big sound, but in a different context. Um, sometimes when you hear a big sound, you imagine that it's all these stereo effects and it, but it's actually a lot of different ways of making it sound big, as we'll see uh, shortly. Stereo is just one of those things. And in fact, using it more sparingly is often a better way uh, to go. So we're gonna go to these once again, track meter. Oh no, I've actually got a the one with the right preset loaded up and uh, Stereo Savage. By the way, one other question I did have a, over email from Ray Ludwig. I want to say Ludwig. Um, I could be wrong. Sorry, Ray, if it is. But um, you sent me a question asking about what. <clears throat> effects to use. I did actually answer that on the email, but um, for any of the rest of you, if you're wondering, you know, it's, I think Ray was working in Logic, so he's wondering if there was a utility effect in that. And unless one's appeared recently that I don't know of, there isn't. Uh, certainly didn't used to be. The utility effects don't have mid-side monitoring. You can use a mid-side EQ uh, with the channel EQ and with the um, linear phase one, which means you can process the mid and side, but you can't actually 
monitor it that I'm aware of, unless anyone is a mad logic user on there who is aware of that. <laughs> nice one, Magnus, loving the break sound. Um, yeah, so in live, you can obviously do it with the live utility, which is handy. Um, but the, if you want to be able to do it um, yourself, by the way, obviously I said that this is from DMG Audio, track meter, uh, which you can get hold of. But of course, there are free meters out there. And one of them, if you go to Plugin Boutique and you click on the software tab, this is pluginboutique.com software tab. And then one of the categories is a utility, no, studio, studio kit or whatever. And then the utilities. And then in there you'll see any plugins that they've got. Uh, and if you go to the free option on the menu and do exactly the same in the utilities, you'll see any free ones. <clears throat> and in there, there's definitely a stereo meter called Gonos or something. Um, and yeah, and various other ones as well. Um, there is a mid side one in there as well. So you can, um, if your door doesn't have this feature, then you can monitor the mid and side. Um, there's also one by Vox and Go, the I think MS MSED. If you if you do a Google search for Vox and Go, MSED, then you'll find the link to that. It's a free plugin. <clears throat> so yeah, going back to this then. So now that we listen to the track here, is it too loud? By the way, I can turn my headphones down, so I'm not sure if this is too loud for you. <clears throat> I just turn it down a touch. So if you now listen to the track and look at the meters and you'll see what I was saying, obviously this is mastered, so you can see it's pushing right up to the top there. But we still got some dynamic range there, it's jumping right down. Um, and obviously we can listen to this the first sort of four bars here, just put on loop um, as is and check out the meter here, check out the meters here. So you can see on the meters that they got a lot of information going on in the mid and only really a bit going on in the side. And you can also see that it's the side information is only happening occasionally. And this is something that um, you should think about a lot more. You know, often when you apply a side signal to a sound, you might think just do it the whole time. So it's just really nice and wide, but it's going to be far more dramatic, cause a far greater impact if you only have these sort of wide blasts happening occasionally. Obviously this intro is quite a sparse one. And again, you can see the big dynamic range as well with this, with the bass sound being introduced really slowly. 12 dB lower than these sort of big kick hits. Um, so if we listen to the side now, again, I'm just right clicking, setting it to mid side mode and rotating it all the way to the side. So you can hear we've only really got um, those hits happening in the side. So as well as you're able to see them on the meter here, um, you can also hear them coming through and then it almost drops away to nothing on the side. And that's because it's a bass sound. So we just got the bass frequencies on there. So the very bassy frequencies don't have that stereo information. Um, again, this is because um, some sort of bass mono effect will have been applied. If you've been applying stereo effects with something like Stereo Savage, again, you do that with the bass bypass switch there, but there's you can also do it on the utility effect by set, turning on bass mono, setting the frequency, just to make sure everything is mono down the bottom. Um, And then as it as that bass sort of opens up across the intro, you start to hear more of it kind of creeping through. Almost certainly because of some kind of delay or phaser that's on there. It's a nice tight sound still, so it isn't like a reverb with loads of trails to the sound. It's nice and clean and tight, but you can see that's been applied to the upper frequencies in the sound. So as it's sort of 
as a filter's opening or whatever's going on. Um, you can you can see that stereo information increasing across the intro here. Uh, and then, yeah, and just keep working through the track and just look at the different stereo information you've got going on and the different sounds that have it applied to, whilst also listening to the side. So mostly it's being, it's that kind of snare, which probably isn't the snare itself. It's probably a layer on top of the snare, uh, which sounds like a vocal. A little bit, a little bit of a clap or something as well, maybe. Um, it's very common to, to, to add multiple layers to sounds again, so you can uh, process them differently. Maybe have one of them spread out really wide or maybe one with some reverb, just one of the layers. Um, but yeah, you can see that's where almost all the stereo information is really coming from. So it's blasting every like um, second and fourth beat. You can see it blasting out on the meter there. Um, and yeah, we can just go through and just check out whatever bits we like. Uh, on the build up, you're going to find the most stereo information because you're going to have the most kind of high frequency sound going on. So yeah, when you get to that vocal sample at the end there. That sample is just spread out really wide. It's just a single sound there. Um, and it's a vocal with mainly high frequency content there. And that's that's been um, spread really wide with chorus or who knows what. Um, yeah, and then listening to the main drop. Exactly the same. So there's a little bit of stereo information on the bass sound, but again, it's just the very upper frequencies. Most of the, the stereo information is on the snare or the snare layer. Uh, and then you've got these occasional kind of hits coming in, occasional like little stab sounds or little bass fills. And they have a lot more stereo information than the regular bass. Especially that one at the end there. Tons of side information with that one. Uh, and the other thing you can do, obviously we didn't show this yet. Um, oh yeah, we did on the previous sound, didn't we? But adding the EQ here, setting it to mid side, and then allowing you to look at the side information as well. So you can see what frequencies they've got going on. So that sound there is way louder with way more stereo information than any of the rest of the track. All of the rest of it is, you know, right down the bottom compared with the, you know, the, the mono sound. So here's the mono sound. And listening, looking at the side now, and listening to it. It doesn't really start, I mean, you can see there's a bit going on here, but that's very common and not really too much to worry about. Some people might sort of insist on absolutely rolling this off really harshly if they were mixing, um, adding a filter there and just making sure this, this was you know completely rolled off to make sure there's no sub going on at all, uh, which you might like to get into the practice of doing, um, but they haven't done it in this case. There's a bit going on. Um, you've also got to be a bit mindful actually of doing that. If you go a bit too overboard with it, things can start to sound a little bit thin, I found. I think I've got into the habit of rolling it off as standard on sort of everything. And sometimes it does actually benefit from a tiny bit of that uh, down here. Maybe not right at the bottom, but down here, potentially sort of between 50 and 100 or around 100. Um, so you can see really though, it doesn't really start to sort of 200 or 400 or so.
So yeah, the bass has been very well controlled across all uh, stereo effects, all of the all of the sounds, and um, yeah, all of the sound information is really only sort of in this upper region here. Um, so yeah, so from this you can kind of take away those little little bits of sort of um, those little gems of kind of production. And, and the reason why I like this, by the way, is because if you listen to it in mono, there's no kind of audible difference in the mix. You don't, you're not getting any sounds like dropping out. You're literally just getting the width changing. Um, so I thought it'd be a good example to kind of show you. And yeah, sound selection wise, everything has its own distinct space there. There aren't that many sounds, but the sounds that are in there have been processed really well. They've really been fattened up, which is what we're going to kind of look at next. Um, and, and yeah, stereo information is being applied quite carefully. Um, making sure that it's not too loud, it's not too constant, it's only happening on the odd occasion, and it's only happening on certain sounds. Um, things like the snare, obviously, quite an obvious one. Um, and then little fills here and there, and making sure that it's only really being applied to the sort of upper frequencies. 